live from the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is CBS 2 News at 5 p.m. A horrific crash kills two people in an area of Inglewood known for speed and accidents. Bystanders rushed in to help after witnesses say a speeding car slammed into a Mustang. Well, both of those cars burst into flames, and that Mustang with two people inside was waiting to make a left turn at 107th Street and Crenshaw Boulevard when it was suddenly hit. CBS 2's Dave Lopez is live at the scene with new video and reaction from witnesses. Dave. Suzanne, just a horrific scene behind me. The car, the Infinity that's on the back of that uh, tow truck uh, is uh, still here. They, many witnesses tell me that the driver of that vehicle was the one that was speeding. Now they just route, just seconds ago, they towed away the Mustang where the two people were killed. Oh my God, it's gonna blow. Cell phone video of a Mustang on fire. A man and a woman trapped inside shortly after it collided with an infinity. The sound was terrible. It was a sound that I would never forget. This is what's left of the Mustang. The female driver was trying to make a left turn off Crenshaw on 108th. And this is the infinity. Kim Couch said a man driving the infinity near Imperial heading down Crenshaw was flirting with her and going very fast. He sped up, almost rear ended a car, sped around them, and just from there, he was probably going 80 to 100 miles an hour. Oh, yeah, he flipped over, catch, and then catches on flame right away. Security video shows the car headed northbound on Crenshaw moments before the collision. And this security video, taken from a church about a half a block away, we've slowed it down, shows the car going through the intersection, detectives say at a high rate of speed, and then you see the impact and the flames that resulted. They were all speeding. Most definitely, it was the driver of the Blue Infinity. From the air, you could see how far the debris is spread. From the ground, you could see exactly the impact of this crash. The man and the woman were pronounced dead at the scene. The driver of the other car remains in critical condition. All of this happened in front of County Fire Station 170. Of the six firefighters assigned to this firehouse, five were out on a maintenance call at the time of the accident. The one engineer who remained heard the collision and he ran outside across the street and he saw the Mustang was still on fire. And with the help of two civilians, they pulled out the man and the woman from the fire. At about the same time, an off-duty firefighter was driving by and he pulled out the man from that car. When he pulled him out, I am told, the man was on his cell phone. I couldn't even believe it. Like, it, it was scary. We thought that the, uh, that's the Mustang in question, uh, that we thought they were driving away, but the tow truck driver stopped. You get a nice, good look at it. You just see, uh, it'd be, you'd be hard pressed if I didn't tell you if it was a Mustang to know it was a Mustang. That's where the two people lost their lives as they were making the turn. One other quick note, people who live in this area along Crenshaw tell me that people use this place as a speedway. They just drive, 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 go through lights. And one man told me that they have about two or three wrecks here on a monthly basis. Back to you in the studio. A burglary suspect who police say stole a black Audi in Mission Viejo slipped into this Santa Ana Albertson store and slipped away. Orange police officers picked up a low jack signal from the stolen car and pursued it with speeds hitting 100 miles per hour. That suspect bailed in the store parking lot and ran in. Officers ordered everyone out. They believe the suspect quickly changed his appearance, blended in with the crowd and took off. They're checking security video to track him down. Homicide detectives have released a security photo of a woman who was murdered in a South Bay parking lot. They believe Susan Leeds was targeted as she left the promenade on the Peninsula Mall last Thursday. Investigators took a person of interest into custody but released him. They're now hoping this photo will help someone remember seeing her the day of the murder. Leeds was wearing a blue short sleeve shirt, black workout type pants and pink shoes with white soles. New murder charges against the man believed to be the Golden State Killer. I have decided to file four counts of first degree murder with special circumstances against Joseph James D'Angelo. Now that was Santa Barbara County DA Joyce Dudley announcing new murder charges against Joseph D'Angelo. Her office has connected the 72 year old to the December 1979 rape and murder of Deborah Manning and the murder of Robert Offerman. D'Angelo is also charged with the July 1981 rape and murder of Sherry Domingo and the death of Greg Sanchez. All were in Goleta. Now Santa Barbara now joined Sacramento, Ventura and Orange Counties in charging D'Angelo with murder. CPS2 Orange County reporter Michelle Gili is live in Santa Ana with how the DA there is working with the other counties. Michelle. 
Well, Pat, there is major collaboration going on right now between the district attorney's offices in all of these cases. They are beginning now to hammer out the details, but the big question that remains is where will the trial be for this one-time police officer? I mean, it could be tried in all four counties. It could be tried just in one county. The decision where the trial will be held for accused serial murderer Joseph D'Angelo, who was also known as the Golden State Killer, could come as early as Friday. Orange County District Attorney Tony Rakakis and other DAs involved in the notorious case will meet in Santa Barbara to discuss what's best for the prosecution. There's not any rule of thumb that'll be applied uh, in this particular case. I mean, this is just one where we're going to get together and we're going to talk about advantages and disadvantages and reasons why it should be in one in one county or another and uh, make a decision that way. Rakakis, who has charged D'Angelo with four special circumstances murders, says it's possible there could be several trials. 18-year-old Janelle Cruz was raped and bludgeoned to death in her Irvine home more than three decades ago. That's the last known crime linked to the Golden State Killer. By then, he'd allegedly already murdered three other people in Orange County. And it was detectives here who made the startling discovery based on new DNA tests that the person who killed them also killed four people in Ventura and Goleta. Based on the suspect's MO, Orange County investigators thought he might be in law enforcement. But the way he was doing things and his uh, ability to get away and and uh, he did, you know, he did very good surveillance uh, before he did his crimes and so forth. So uh, he appeared to know uh, what he was doing and what the police would do. If Orange County is chosen as the place to try the Golden State Killer, Tony Rakakis says his prosecutors are ready. And I think the idea to let people know um, that that they might get caught right when it happens, or uh, or or short time later, or years later. I, I just think that's good for all of us. For now, D'Angelo remains in Sacramento County where he's being held in jail, but at some point he is going to be moved here to Orange County to be arraigned here on murder charges. That's the latest live in Santa Ana. Back to you. Thank you, Michelle. A day of celebration both here and across the country for three Americans just freed from North Korea. They landed at Joint Base Andrews, Maryland late last night, where President Trump and the First Lady welcomed them home. Two of the three are expected to head back to Southern California. Kim Hak Sung graduated in 2004 from a master's program at World Mission University in Koreatown. Tony Kim, who graduated from UC Riverside, was teaching at a private university in Pyongyang, where he was detained last year. Those who knew both men say they can't wait to see them. In a ways, he's an American hero. I mean, you know, and uh, he, he was over there, he's coming back, and uh, it's, it's a good story, and I'd like to shake his hand. He's a good man, very good man, very family man, and he's a very Christian. After their arrival, President Trump announced on Twitter his meeting with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un will take place in Singapore June 12th. Mr. Trump wrote, we will both try to make it a very special moment for world peace. The White House issued strong support today for Israel after its most serious military confrontation with Iran. Israel says its troops in the Golan Heights were targeted by 20 missiles that Iran fired from inside Syria. It retaliated by attacking nearly all of Iran's military installations in Syria. A war monitoring group says the Israeli attacks killed 23 people, including five Syrian soldiers. President Trump's personal lawyer is facing more heat over accusations of selling access to the White House and cashing in to the tune of millions. Pharmaceutical giant Novartis acknowledged paying Michael Cohen more than a million dollars for his services, even though they only met once. The company's CEO called the agreement a mistake. Cohen was also paid by AT&T and Korea Aerospace Industries. The money went to Cohen's company, Essential Consulting, which paid Porn star Stormy Daniels, $130,000 to reportedly keep quiet about her affair with President Trump. They should release the bank statements associated with this count for the public to see. If there's nothing to hide, they shouldn't hide it. The Treasury Department's internal watchdog is now looking into the release of Cohen's banking records. And the White House's newest lawyer has quit his old gig, citing the pressing demands of the Russia investigation. Last month, Rudy Giuliani said his leave from the law firm Greenberg Traurig was temporary, 
hoping to bring a quick end to Robert Mueller's probe. But now he has resigned because, according to the firm, the White House work is lasting longer than initially anticipated. It's been 11 years since someone gunned down a young man at a party. Police think a reward will help jog someone's memory to help catch the killer. Joey Lopez, Lopez's family and Ontario police met at his gravesite today in Pomona. They announced the $10,000 reward. The 19-year-old was shot multiple times at a house party on Boxwood Court after a fight broke out. Police say the party was full of people, and so far, no one was, no one has come forward. Rather, Lopez's heartbroken mother appealed for help. They said there was uh, more than 100 kids there at the party. There's got to be somebody that knows something, saw something, and I just want to give my son the justice he needs. Witnesses describe the killer as having a tattoo of a letter or name on his chest or stomach. A jury has found two LAPD officers liable in the shooting death of a mentally disabled man on Skid Row in an incident that created a huge community uproar. The 2015 shooting was captured on cell phone. The jury in the civil case found one officer denied Charlie Africa Kudang his rights against unreasonable force. They found the sergeant breached his duty to intervene. Another officer and the city were not liable. And late this afternoon, attorneys reached a nearly $2 million settlement in the case. It still requires city council approval. Bob Marley's granddaughter is demanding action on how police handled an encounter with her as she left an Airbnb in Rialto. Denisha Prendergast held a news conference in New York this morning. She claims she and her friends were racially profiled. A neighbor called police after seeing them leaving a home with suitcases. Neither the caller nor police knew the group had rented the house. Prendergast again described her encounter, which is different than what police body cameras recorded. Because what happened is that I almost died because somebody was afraid of me. But I'm not afraid of you. I just want to love. So what if it was your house? No, we, are, we appreciate it. Rialto police say officers treated she and her friends with respect. Her lawyer says they have not filed a lawsuit. They want to meet with Rialto police and the mayor. They also want the neighbor charged with filing a false police report. Taking aim at Target. Why Burberry is suing the big box retailer. Plus, stop right there! Stop right there! Caught on camera, body cam video captures a tense standoff between a police officer and two suspects. Also, how can you remember all your online passwords? I know I don't. We talked to the experts at Google about ways to make it easier while you keep your information private. And taking a live look at Sky 2, which is live over the premiere of Solo. The red carpet begins at 5.30, and we'll take you there live. Hey, everybody. I'm Garth Kemp. Wow, what a day today. You didn't have to go to a planet or a galaxy far, far away. The weather's coming up.